G'day, Jamie Chapman here for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. Today we're going to continue our look at the urinary system and specifically looking at the renal corpuscle. Um, this is a really lovely section from the Virtual Microscopy Database and this uh, section comes from uh, Professor Michael Hurst uh, from the University of Michigan. Um, so let's start our three minutes. So here's our renal corpuscle, and this is obviously the kidney cortex. And remembering uh, that the kidney corpuscle is made up of a Bowman's capsule consisting of a parietal layer, which are these squamous cells, and then the visceral layer, which are the cells which sit on the surface of these capillary loops, which is the glomerulus, and these are the podocytes. Now, one thing I never mentioned in the last video on the renal corpuscle is a third cell type which we find amongst uh, the renal corpuscle. And these are sort of modified connective tissue cells or equivalent to little pericytes. And these are referred to as mesangial cells. And we have two different types of mesangial cells. We have some which are found uh, amongst uh, the loops of uh, the glomeruli and uh, sit within the connective tissue here, the mesangium, and these are referred to as intraglomerular mesangial cells, or just re reference to um, mesangial cells. And then we've got a group of these mesangial cells which sit outside of the glomerulus, and they're referred to as extraglomerular mesangial cells, or lacer cells. And lacer cells are part of the larger uh, structure known as the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which is involved in uh, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which regulates blood pressure. Maybe we'll talk about that in a different video. Uh, so here we can see um, the uh, parietal layer of Bowman's capsule, and you can actually see this one's actually continuous with the proximal convoluted tubule here. So we've got moved from a simple squamous epithelium to a simple cuboidal epithelium here. You can see the little striations down the bottom of this proximal convoluted tubule here, lots of basolateral infoldings, which are increased cell membrane for um, iron transport. So during filtration, um, all of the uh, nutrients are reabsorbed by pre predominantly by the proximal convoluted tubule, and so they do that with the iron channels in the basal layer, which are then uh, move into the underlying peritubular capillaries, which you can see one example here. So we can actually see with this glomerulus, we actually have kind of a, a two-pole system. So we've got the vascular pole, which consists of these afferent arterioles, and then we've got the efferent arteriole over this side. So the afferent arteriole brings the blood in to the glomerulus, it's filtered, and then the blood returns via the efferent arteriole. So we have what's referred to here as the vascular pole, and then down here where we've got the continuation of the Bowman's capsule, which then becomes a proximal convoluted tubule, we refer to this as the urinary pole. So we've got this sort of two poles associated with each glomerulus. Again, we've got this accumulation of nuclei here, a little dense spot. This is referred to as the macula densa. That's the second of the three components which make up the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The third component being juxtaglomerular cells, which are modified smooth muscle cells of the afferent arteriole. Anyway, that's our three minutes. I hope some of that was useful.